Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I am filming in my dining room. I'm going to talk about tubes today. It's going to be very high level because tubes versus solid state is, is a very big discussion. Probably like vinyl versus CD and uh, there's no point debating it. Um, rather, it's more about my experience with uh, having maybe tried 10 tube preamps and uh, amps. I, I mean, those are the ones that I really gotten a chance to to listen to uh, I've listened to way more than that uh, but I am by, by no mean an expert in tubes uh, my friends are some of them ha they have like tons and tons of tubes and uh, they can spend days and days talking about it which is good for me because I'm very slow at picking up stuff um, I'm hoping that by sharing my experience it will speed up your experience with tube because in the very beginning uh, just like most of most people I'll go on the internet and read up on uh, you know what's so good about tubes it's supposed to be warmer fuller, uh, more full sound they're very good at producing second uh, order harmonics uh, the sense of holographicness air they clip better when you play loud and so forth so you, I, I would read up on stuff like that but it's I, I don't understand it so the first time I got myself a tube preamp all I listened for was smoothness because I hear so many things about oh if you have let's say a Focal a bright speaker go get a, a, a tube preamp and, and it would tone down the brightness so in, in my head in the very beginning that's all I listened for when I get a tube preamp is it smooth or not and as I continue my journey in two preamps, I noticed that it's not important because you'll come across two preamps or two amps that are not smooth. In fact, they're very bright and very sharp. I remember I once got this Conrad Johnson. It was $6,000 new at the time. Um, of course, I didn't pay anything like that, but uh, I remember it was very bright. There's a sense of clarity to it. and. In my head, I thought, hey, I thought all tube preamps are supposed to be very warm and, and smooth, but it's not true. Another preamp I had was the Athen 1L, 1 Pre L, I'll put it in the description. Now, that once again leans towards more uh, focusing on clarity. It's, it was not a smooth preamp uh, per se. And recently, I listened to my friend uh, who built his own speaker. He had a uh, a BAT BAT tube and preamp it was very very rolled off so having experienced a few uh, tube preamps that's when I realized and amps too that you know, smoothness is not the key you get the same thing with solid state and in fact I've, I if you talk about tone wise I don't think I can pass a blind test between let's say you put a tube preamp and, and ask me is this a tube preamp I can't do it so the next thing that uh, people bring up is that tube introduce a certain reverb it's like you're in a cave or something i i don't really hear that so for me it's like mm, I'm, I'm not sure i i think i think so but I, i'm not 100 percent confident and all those things about clipping uh, at high volume because i don't listen to music at high volume it doesn't do anything for me so therefore the question is so why bother getting a tube preamp and amp and for me the key word here is it's uh, holographic and air. Now, I mentioned this already in the $300,000 system video, and yet my friends still ask me, so what's tube preamp about? Uh, so that's why I am going to keep repeating it until uh, it sinks in. When the first time, first time when I got my first tube preamp, uh, I tried to listen for it and I don't hear it. So you would expect that, you know, okay, so holographic air. And every friend of mine who are who's into tubes, I ask the same question and they always answer the same thing. And then I ask them, so what is air? What is holographic? Uh, uh, I mean, can, can you explain it to me? Because I don't get it. So only when I heard $30,000 uh, tube preamp, that's where I get it. So think of it like this. Uh, here's the key for me. And every time when I go listen to a tube preamp, I, I listen for this. When you close your eyes, if you can imagine yourself able to walk around the singer and walk between the instruments that's a good tube preamp you can say well my solid state does the same thing right i mean i can separate equip uh, instruments very well i'll put it this way if you have a three thousand dollar top of the line solid state and a three thousand dollar top of the line uh, tube 
Think of it this one, the tube one doing maybe 50% better than the solid state. So if for those of you who are solid state and you think that oh, right now my system is very holographic and I can, I can really separate the instruments, just multiply that by uh, 50%. That's what tube does. And not only that, when this, I, I guess maybe that's the word sense of air, right? Everybody has their bubble and with a good tube preamp. And if, I would say like this, if you're using solid state, you have to squeeze in between the instruments. If you picture yourself able to walk around it with a tube preamp, you can walk around uh, each instrument uh, easily. And there's a sense of layer and stage, 3D holographicness. Once I heard that, I get it, I got it. And then every time when I listen to tube uh, setup, I listen for that. It's that ability to walk around the singer and the ability to walk around the illusion of walking uh, in between instruments. And there, there are many solid state uh, integrated amps that I listen to that actually has it. It's not just tube, right? Because that's why I say, if you take a tube setup and you take a, a solid state setup, it's hard to tell the difference if you don't know what you're listening for. Recently, uh, my friend bought the Macintosh MC452. I'm, for those who have been following me, you've seen that amp. That is a nice $10,000 amp. So you expect it to resolve very well, to separate instruments very well. So recently I finished borrowing it. So we brought it to his home and he had the Audio Research VT200. That has 26 tubes in it. So we did an A-B test and right away you can tell the sense of holographicness, the ability to walk around. Once again, I'm repeating the singer and the spacing of all the instrument in their own bubble is gone with the 452. Now, 452 is known to be pretty good. It, it is new sound. It's not the old Macintosh sound that you know, everybody thinks the grandfather is used to. It's really the new sound. And even then, in the face of a, a tube amp, in terms of holographicness, you're talking about a gap, a big gap. I, I mean, it is so big that uh, you will hear it if you know exactly what you're listening for. What you gain out of it, solid state, the 452, better bass control. Bass was tight, was faster, and it was more lean. So there's pros and cons to it, right? And I guess I can understand that fuller, warmer sound, if bass is a bit more fat with, let's say, that tube uh, amp, then uh, yeah, okay, I, I can see there. Um, but in my own setup, usually I would go for a tube preamp and then a solid state amp. So trying to get the best of both, both worlds. In that specific example, he had the LS25 tube preamp and the Macintosh MC452 amp versus LS25 tube preamp and a tube amp VT200 at 200 watts. Even at 200 watts tube power, the control of bass is nowhere near uh, the solid state. So the solid state with a tube preamp, yeah, you, you have that sense of air, but it's just not the same with a full setup. So the downside of having a tube setup is floor noise for me. And of course, uh, bass control is just not the same. Um, that's part of the reason why I move away from a tube setup, because I felt like, you know, it's good enough uh, solid state and uh, and the floor noise bothered me. The, the higher you go with tube uh, setups, I mean, higher in price, uh, the less floor noise you get. That's true. And what I noticed is that the higher price tube preamps, they do a better job in creating that sense of holographicness, the ability to walk around. It's addictive. Once you get into it, once you, you it, it took me some time to transition, of course, to solid state. And once I got back to tube recently, because my Canton, I needed it, you, you, you feel like, goodness, I, I've been missing a lot uh, ever since I moved to solid state. I like clean sound, solid state. It's darker background. You can listen more into the recording. Uh, once again, better uh, bass control and so forth. So there, there's pros and cons to both. Now, I've never tried a very expensive tube pre uh, solid state preamp, maybe a $5,000 one. Maybe it does that airy, that holographicness as good as two. I don't know. Uh, the most I've ever tried was a, maybe a $3,000, $4,000, $3,005 uh, solid state uh, preamp. 
but compared to the about three four thousand dollar tube preamps that the gap is there that that, that holographicness now moving to the second part it's uh tube rolling now remember i mentioned earlier that uh you know if i let's say i have a, a focal and i decided to go buy a tube preamp and thinking that it'll help tame the highs and when i go home i'm like oh this doesn't do anything it's as uh, fatiguing as my solid state tube rolling helps not actually not helps tube rolling makes a big difference and is one area when I can, where I can say I can 100% pass a blind test. Now, of course, there's so many tubes out there. There's some that sound very similar, so that it's very difficult to pass a blind test. But there's so many that um, there's so many variety that you can easily tell. And uh, I, I remember once, uh, yeah, from moving from one brand to another brand, I can hear the brightness gone completely just because I changed tubes. Um, also, if you spend time playing with tubes, you'll know that uh, each tube has its characteristic. Now, I'm not talking about brand, I'm talking about uh, model. For example, 6922 tubes, 300B tubes, 845 tubes. They do have their own uh, sonic characteristic. 845, I had it, tried it once. It was a 2 watt amp, actually, 2 watt. Yeah, you, you better have efficient speakers. And the vocals were very sweet. They're more sweet than the 300Bs. Um, and uh, fortunately, I have friends who, who have a lot of tubes. So once in a while, I get a chance to borrow it and try it and experiment with it. Uh, it. It can get very expensive. Tubes can get expensive, but it's definitely a lot of fun. So um, as I mentioned, this is a very, very simple video. I, I want to go very high level. And um, it, it took me a while to, to get that, to get it. All I care about when I go for a tube preamp or amp is is it holographic so the next time for those who have don't have a lot of experience with tubes go listen for that specific feature characteristic when you go to an audio show right you go listen to solid state of course there's many other things that that uh that is important when creating that holographicness the speaker and so, and so forth right uh, that even the DAC actually I, I once had a DAC that has tubes in it anyway that's a different discussion all right so i'm going to wrap it up and uh, for those who have experience with tubes, um, you know, comment. Uh, what I notice is that it, it is a whole progress for me. So I get my first tube preamp, I, I listen, listen, and then I read about it. Okay, so this, I, I hear this, I hear this, and then I keep going and going and going. And uh, it took me a while before it clicked like that. And every time when I now listen to a tube setup, uh, I, I'm very specific in what I'm uh, listening for. Um, all right, so till next time then.